Hi, this is Lynn again for Superimpose X, and today we're gonna go through layers. It's a big topic, so we're gonna divide it into two parts, and this is the first one. I'm gonna show you how layers work and give you an example of how to use the layer feature to create a really cool project. So what exactly are layers? Well, they're basically pictures overlaid on top of one another. So with the layers feature, you can combine different pictures, move them around, change the order of them, and basically create a new picture that combines all of these different ones. So it's a really powerful feature that you can use in endless ways. To get started with this project, I'm going to create a new session by choosing the background image, which is going to be the city skyline. This is the Layers tab, and from here you can control all of your layers and also add new ones. To add a new layer, I'm tapping the cross here in the bottom right corner where it says Add Layer. You can choose to create an empty layer, but since I want to add a photo as a new layer, I'm going to choose Photo Layer. So now as you can see, we have the second image on top of the first one, so we have two different layers. In order to view all of your layers, you tap this icon here in the top right corner, and that brings out the layer stack viewer. So you can easily tap this icon whenever you want to view or hide the layer stack. If I tap and hold on a layer, I can drag it around and switch the order of the layers. So if I put it down here, it's now underneath the city picture, so we can actually see it. Notice that even though this is now technically the background layer, the size and dimensions of the project remain the same. So the background picture that you choose when you start the project is important because it determines the base size of the project. Now if I bring the layer back on top, it's again above the other image. So that way you can organize your different layers and choose which order you want them in. When you want to make an edit to a specific layer, like move it around or add a mask for example, you first need to pick which layer you want to do this to. You can do that here in the layer stack viewer by tapping on the layer and you will see that the layer you select, the current layer, is highlighted in blue. The current layer is also indicated on the screen with that same blue outline. And if I hide the layer stack, we can actually even select the layer by tapping on it on the screen. But sometimes having this blue outline around the layer is a little bit distracting. So if you want to hide this outline, just tap the same layer again and it will disappear. But if I bring out the layer stack again, you'll see that we still have that layer selected. If we tap on a layer in the layer stack viewer, that will bring up this pop-up menu where we have a bunch of different options. You can delete the layer. You can merge down, which means that you combine this layer with the layer underneath. You can duplicate the layer, which will create an exact copy of it. You can replace the image, which lets you choose a new picture, but it will still have the same size and positioning as the current one. You can choose to make this layer size the base size of the project. You can match color, which I will show you in just a second. And lastly, you can hide the layer if you don't want it to be visible. In this example, I'm going to use the match color feature, which lets you match the color of an image to another one. So for example, I really like the city skyline photo, but I also really like the dark colors in this image. So using the match color feature, I can copy the effect on this photo over to the skyline picture. So I'm going to select the skyline photo, tap on it to bring up the pop-up menu, and choose match color. Now it will ask you to pick a layer to match the color to, and I'm going to choose the dark city image. And now that added the same effect to the skyline image. I don't really need this top layer anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and hide it, and there we have the result. So the match color feature can be used to apply an effect like we did in this example, but if you're combining different pictures into one and they all have different colors and lighting, you can also use it to give all of the layers the same look in order to make them blend better. Next I want to add a moon to the sky, so I'm going to go to add layer, photo layer, and pick this picture with the moon. Because I'm really only interested in the moon part of this image, I'm going to go ahead and crop it and then tap choose. Now I want to remove the background around the moon, which is called masking. We have a whole separate tutorial about masks, so I won't explain too much about that right now. But to add a mask, you go into the mask tab and tap mask tool. 
As you can see, you have a ton of different masking tools to choose from, but for this picture, I'm gonna use the one in the top right corner, which lets you paint over the background and then it will automatically detect the edges for you, which makes it super quick and easy to use. So there we have the cutout moon. Next, let's go into the transform tab. We will discuss more about this section in the next tutorial video about layers, but in transform, we can scale and move the layer around to position it how we like it. Then I'm gonna tap a blend and drag down the opacity a little bit, which makes it slightly transparent just so that it doesn't look too intense. Now let's add one final layer. This picture is actually a PNG with a transparent background, so we don't need to do any masking because the background is already removed. And then again, I'm going into transform and positioning it where I want it. Finally, we're gonna take a look at how you can view each individual layer. Currently, we're viewing the blended image with all the layers together, but let's say I only want to view the burst, for example. I can select that layer and tap the second button in the top right corner. Now I'm only viewing the current layer, which can be really helpful, especially when you're masking. By tapping this eye, we can even cycle through different modes to see how it looks on different backgrounds to get a better view of the masked and unmasked areas. We can also bring out the layer stack viewer and switch between our different layers. And then by tapping this icon again, we can go back to viewing the blended image. So that is the finished project. Now let's export this picture by tapping the second icon in the top left corner. I'm gonna choose a blended image, JPEG, and save. That's all for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to check out part two where we will explain more about layers. And if you have any questions at all, you're always welcome to send us an email through the contact us option inside the app so that we can help you out from there. Bye.